OpenAI, the San Francisco-based lab behind AI systems like GPT-3 and DALL-E 2, has launched a new program to provide early-stage AI startups with $1 million capital each and access to OpenAI tech and resources financed by the OpenAI Startup Fund. Make sure you stick with me to the end of the video. Without any further delay, let's get into it. What package awaits the early-stage AI startups from OpenAI? The $100 million entrepreneurial tranche was announced last May and was backed by Microsoft and other partners. The 10 or thereabout founders chosen for Converge will receive $1 million each and admission to five weeks of office hours, workshops, and events with OpenAI staff, as well as early access to OpenAI models and programming tailored to AI companies. OpenAI wrote in a blog post shared with TechCrunch ahead of the day's announcement that they are excited to meet groups across all phases of the seed stage, from pre-idea solo founders to co-founding teams already working on a product. OpenAI also made it known that engineers, designers, researchers, and product builders from all backgrounds, disciplines, and experience levels are encouraged to apply, and prior experience working with AI systems is not required. The deadline to apply is November 25th, but OpenAI noted that it will continue to evaluate applications after that date for future cohorts. When OpenAI first detailed the OpenAI Startup Fund, it said recipients of cash from the fund would receive access to Azure resources from Microsoft. It's unclear whether the same benefit will be afforded to Converge participants. We will await on OpenAI to clarify. It was an OpenAI spokesperson who confirmed that Converge will include Azure Access. We will also wait on OpenAI to disclose the full terms for Converge, including the equity agreement. Beyond Converge, surprisingly, there aren't many incubator programs focused exclusively on AI startups. The Allen Institute for AI has a small accelerator that launched in 2017, which provides up to a $500,000 pre-seed investment and up to $450,000 in cloud computing credits. Google Brain founder Andrew Ng heads up the AI Fund, a $175 million tranche to initiate new AI-centered businesses and companies. And Nat Friedman, who is formerly of GitHub and Daniel Gross, fund the AI grant, providing up to $250,000 for AI-native product startups and $250,000 in cloud credits from Azure. With Converge, OpenAI is no doubt looking to cash in on the increasingly lucrative industry that is AI. The information reported that OpenAI, which itself is reportedly in talks to raise cash from Microsoft at a nearly $20 billion valuation, has agreed to lead the financing of Descript, an AI-powered audio and video editing app at a valuation of around $550 million. AI startup Cohere is said to be negotiating a $200 million round led by Google, while Stability AI, the company supporting the development of generative AI systems, including Stable Diffusion, recently raised $101 million. The size of the largest AI startup financing rounds doesn't necessarily correlate with revenue, given the enormous expenses, ranging from personnel to computer, along with others involved in developing state-of-the-art AI systems. Training Stable Diffusion alone costs around $600,000, according to Stability AI, but the continued willingness of investors to cut these startups' massive checks, see Inflection AI's $225 million raise, Anthropic's $580 million in new funding, and so on, suggests that they have confidence in an eventual return on investment. Next up, let's look into why generative AI is suddenly on everyone's lips. Have you been following the progress of OpenAI? This company, run by Sam Altman, has a neural networks that can now write original text and create original images with astonishing ease and speed. If you've only paid vague attention to the company's progress and the growing traction that other so-called generative AI companies are suddenly gaining, you definitely should pay close attention to this part of the video. To better understand this concept, we'll look into an interview with James Courier, a five-time founder and now venture capitalist who co-founded the company NFX five years ago with several of his serial founding friends. Courier falls into the camp of people who follow progress closely, so closely that NFX has made many related investments in generative technology as he describes it, and it's getting more and more of the team's attention every year. In fact, Courier doesn't think the buzz around this new wrinkle on AI isn't so much hype as it is a realization that the wider startup world is suddenly faced with a very very big opportunity for the first time in a long time. Courier stated that every 14 years, we have one of those Cambrian explosions. We had one on the internet in 1994. We had another one around mobile phones in 2008. Now, we will have another in 2022. When presented with a question regarding the confusion about generative AI, including how new it is or whether it has just become the latest buzzword, James Courier said that he thinks what happened to the AI world in general was that we felt like we could have deterministic AI, which would help us identify the truth of something. For example, is it 
a broken part on the production line? Is this an appropriate meeting to have? This is where you determine something using AI the same way a human determines something. This is largely what AI has been for the past 10 to 15 years. The other sets of AI algorithms were more like these streaming algorithms, which aim to look at huge bodies of content and then generate something new from it, saying, here are 10,000 examples. Can we create that 10,000 and first similar example? And stuff like that. He further stated that these were quite fragile, quite brittle, until about a year and a half ago. Now, the algorithms have improved, but more importantly, the corpora of content we looked at have grown bigger because we simply have more processing power. So, what happened is that these algorithms overlapped with Moore's Law, with vastly improved storage, bandwidth, and computational speed, and suddenly, they became capable of producing something very similar to what a human would produce. This means that the face value of the text it will write and the face value of the drawing it will draw are very similar to what a human will do, and all of this has happened in the last two years. Therefore, it's not a new idea, but it has just reached that threshold. When presented with another question of if it was computing power that suddenly changed the game and not a previously missing technological infrastructure, he answered that it didn't change suddenly, it just changed gradually until the quality of its generation got to where it was meaningful to us. That being the case, the answer is generally no. The algorithms were very similar. In these broadcast algorithms, they have improved somewhat, but really, it's all about the processing power. Then about two years ago, the powerful language model, the GPT, came out, which was a kind of on-premises calculation. And then GPT-3 came out, where the AI company, OpenAI, would do the calculation for you in the cloud. Because the data models were so much larger, they had to do it on their own servers. You can't afford to do it on your own. And at that point, things really exploded. He further highlighted that they know this because they invested in a company that makes AI-based generative games, including AI Dungeon. And he admitted that he thinks the vast majority of all GPT-3 calculations came from AI Dungeon at one point. Judging from his response, can one conclude that AI Dungeon requires a smaller team than another game maker? James Courier already has some answers for us. He stated that that was one of the big pluses, absolutely. They don't have to spend all that money to house all that data, and they can, with a small group of people, produce dozens of gaming experiences that all benefit from it. In fact, the idea is that you're going to add generative AI to older games, so your non-player characters can actually say something more interesting than they do today. Although, the experiences you get are fundamentally different from AI to gaming, compared to adding AI into existing games. But these are not offshoots of OpenAI. Courier clarified that all of this generative technology will not be built solely on the OpenAI GPT-3 model, it was only the first. The open source community has now replicated much of their work, and they're probably eight months, six months behind in terms of quality. But it will get there. And because open source versions cost one-third, one-fifth, or one-twentieth the cost of OpenAI, there will be a lot of price competition. And we will see a proliferation of these models competing with OpenAI, and we are probably going to end up with five or six or eight, or maybe 100 of them. Then, in addition to these, unique AI models will be built. That way, we can have an AI model that's really looking to do poetry, or AI models that really look at how we do visual images of dogs and dog hair, or we will have one that is really specialized in writing sales emails. That concludes today's video. If you found the video helpful, please do consider giving us a thumbs up, and don't forget to share the video with your friends and family. See you next time.